Hi, this is Anita from the Dusty Roads podcast, where it's all about living life as a global citizen. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Cambodia, and in particular about Angkor Wat. Now, as I mentioned before, throughout some of my podcasts recently, I recently published a book called A Bus on a Dusty Road, Life Lessons of Living in Asia. And in one of the books, I have a chapter about, about a marvelous ride that my friend and I, Vong, took around Angkor Wat and some children that we met there who were selling us some different trinkets. If you have a chance to travel to Cambodia or any place in Southeast Asia and you want to understand more about some of these children you meet on the streets that are trying to you know, sell you something, this chapter, I believe, would give you some great insights into some things that maybe you didn't understand about them or about their lives. We had the opportunity to meet these fascinating children who knew and understood every single capital of the world. Yet they were going to school, they were working out on the streets trying to help support some of their families and doing their homework at night while at the same time making little trinkets to be able to sell out there on the streets to tourists like me or you. If you're going to be going to Southeast Asia or looking at maybe traveling to that part of the world or just interested about this part of the world, you know, I recommend you read the book. I hope you'll read the book. I wrote the book for people to be able to understand more about Asia and maybe get a different view about lives other than their own. We will put a link in the description for you to be able to find it so you can find it on Amazon. You can get a Kindle version or you can get the printed version and both the versions have some photos of different parts of Asia. So we hope that it is something that you will enjoy. We want to talk a little bit about Angkor Wat and about 12 facts about Angkor Wat. Those of you that don't know, Angkor Wat, which is also in the city, a city that you'll also hear another name of, is Siem Reap. So Siem Reap is actually the city where Angkor Wat is at. So sometimes there can be a little bit of confusion with that. So if you're going to fly in Cambodia, you're looking for an international flight, the flight will take you to a city called Siem Reap. But Siem Reap is actually the city, but the ruins are called Angkor Wat. You know, Angkor Wat was founded in the 12th century by the Khmer Empire. The Angkor Wat complex is over 1,000 years old, and even though the complex is over 1,000 years old, for many years the world didn't know anything about these temples that were there. This is because it was buried under the Cambodian jungle. And, you know, it's amazing because when you go there, the exquisite beauty and all these things that were preserved there for these thousand-year-old temples is truly a magnificent wonder. If you love ancient structures or you, you know, enjoy seeing ancient parts of the world, this really is a must-go place. So here are some facts about it. As I mentioned before, it was built in the 12th century. And actually what most people don't realize, because today Cambodia is such a Buddhist country, it was actually originally built as a Hindu temple. And most people don't realize that there was this change that took place in Cambodia and in many parts of Southeast Asia, where where the countries were maybe once Hindu and then later switched and became Buddhist. It was hidden for a thousand years. And it spread over 400 acres. So for 400 acres of this was essentially hidden for a thousand years. You know, it wasn't until the 1840s that it was discovered by a French explorer. So, you know, truly this was an area that was just overgrown. And this French explorer maybe, you know, heard about, he heard about this, wanted to go find it, find it. And he found this, this huge amount of temple complexes all overgrown. Angkor Wat means temple capital city. So it basically means, you know, a a temple capital city, or this is the capital city of the temples. You know, Wat means temple, Angkor means capital city. So if you translate it, literally it means capital city temple or temple city capital. It was built as a state temple and city complex and was considered to be the commerce and the political center of the Khmer Empire, or this part of Southeast Asia during this time. It was actually the center of Southeast Asia during this time. This this was considered to be the golden years of the Khmer Empire, the golden years of Cambodia, was during this time when Angkor Wat was there. 
It is considered to be Khmer architectural masterpiece. And when you go there and you see it, it really is a masterpiece. The, the carvings, the stones, the Buddhas, it's phenomenal, the work that these craftsmen did on these temples. That is why in 1992, it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. That's why it's also considered to be one of the world's eighth wonders. The name Angkor Wat is also the name for one of the largest temples. So not only is Angkor Wat you know, the capital city temple, but there's also a temple named Angkor Wat. And that's considered to be one of the main temples. So if you go to Angkor Wat, it's the temple that everyone will see. It, it's really one of the main temples there. But yet there are 72 temples in the Angkor Wat area. And what's really interesting about this is you know, there's 72 temples, but there's all different types of temples you can see there. Some of them are really overgrown. Some of them are still like, you can still see some of the jungle and the trees growing out of them. And other ones have been pretty much cleared. So you can really find a lot of different things there. The Angkor Wat temple itself faces west, the direction of the Hindu god Vishnu. And that's why it, what's interesting about this, because most Khmer temples today face east. One of the great things about Angkor Wat and visiting the whole area of Angkor Wat and this temple complexes is you will get marvelous sunrises and sunsets. I used to do a bike ride there. Many times did a bike ride there. There was this great bike ride that went on in Angkor Wat. And uh, we'd ride 100 kilometers, which would be four times around the complexes. We'd get up early in the morning, like at 4, 4 a.m., be there at 5 a.m., the race would start. And I could tell you, watching the sunrise over the temple complexes was magnificent. It is magnificent to watch the sunrises and the sunsets over Angkor Wat. So if you're really interested in or you plan on traveling to this part of Cambodia, I highly recommend it. If you're going to go to Cambodia, most people will travel to Angkor Wat. In fact, now there's a lot of direct international flights from you know, many, many cities. Hanoi has one. You know, Ho Chi Minh has one, Bangkok does, many other places have direct flights where you don't have to go into Phnom Penh, the capital, even though I do feel like Phnom Penh is also quite a fun city to visit. It's, I've always really loved Phnom Penh. I love the energy of Phnom Penh. But many people, when they go on their tours to a place like Cambodia, will only go to Angkor Wat. And, you know, it is a magnificent place. It's a magnificent town to visit. It's got some, um, you know, besides the temple complexes there, it's got some great markets. The way I highly recommend to see the temples, there are several ways. You know, some people do elephant treks, which is quite fun. I have personally done that. A lot of times I've taken a tuk-tuk, and like I've said, I bicycled around. And I've always really enjoyed that because it's really allowed me to stop and be able to see things and to be able to see some of the local life and the local culture. It was a bit of what we talk about in um, my book when my friend Vong and I went there and we cycled there and meeting some of these children. And we, we had the opportunity to meet a lot of the local culture that you wouldn't normally see if you're maybe on a big tour bus. But that's sort of the way that I love to travel. I love to be part of the local culture because I really believe in living my life as a global citizen. And part of that is about taking in the local culture and trying to do things as much local as I can and, and really be able to understand the culture and the area where I travel. We hope that you've enjoyed this and we'll put some links into the description below for our, not only our book, but also to, to our blog about the 12 facts about Angkor Wat Cambodia. If you'd like to be able to read more and understand more about the history and the culture of this magnificent area of the world. If you haven't gone there, we highly recommend it. Thank you all for listening. We know without you, this would not be possible. And thank you to our technical team for putting this together. 